welcome back to the channel y'all Chris the camping Texan and where in the world is the Geo Pro this weekend we're camped out in Northeast Texas at Caddo Lake State Park on the Big Cypress Bio this is campsite number 40 well good morning y'all I'm glad y'all can make it out to the campsite uh, just enjoying a hot cup of coffee this morning we had a, a rare cold front move in this weekend this is uh, the first weekend of spring well, y'all, we sure enjoyed our trip down to Busher State Park. It was nice to wrap up uh, that trip and to see both Busher and Bastrop. That's a really nice park. I enjoyed uh, the Pine Gulch Trail. Seven miles of hiking it was pretty awesome. I can't wait to get back there when they get that dam finished and to see it completed with uh, Busher Lake. It's going to be really special. But y'all, we're we're up here in east texas uh we're at caddo lake state park uh this is one of the first parks that was slated for construction after the texas park board was created now uh, this park was built by ccc company 889 and 857 between 1933 and 1934. uh you'll see how impressive their work is the minute that you pull in to the park uh, the entrance is just awe-inspiring uh, the recreational facility they have here the cabins their work is really really awesome you guys got to get out here and check this park out well speaking of special this park is part of a hometown series of parks for me i grew up about 30 minutes from here in atlanta texas and so I used to visit this park when I was a kid. In fact, I have a, a quick story I'll tell you about this park. Uh, I was about 10 years old and I was out here with my uncle Chuck and my dad. My uncle Chuck was a big fisherman and he had just purchased a Ranger bass boat and he was anxious to get it out there and, and try it out. Well, they had to go up to the store and get some bait and some other things for the boat. And my Uncle Chuck, he told me to hang on to the rope and don't let it go. Well, as 10-year-old kids are, uh, guess what I did? I held on to the rope for a little while, but I saw a squirrel or saw something that caught my attention, and I let go of the rope. Well, y'all can guess what happened from there. That's right. The boat started floating away. Well, I looked up and realized that it was too far for me to go jump in the water, and uh, I was panicking. About that time, my dad and my Uncle Chuck come running down the hill. And I said, Uncle Chuck, your boat's floating away. And so my dad and my Uncle Chuck jumped in the water. And luckily, they were able to grab the rope and drag it back to shore. But y'all, I'd never lived that down. Uh, that weekend out here at Caddo Lake was miserable for me. And every Christmas at my nanny's house, they made fun of me. And right as we'd sit around the table to eat, my Uncle Chuck would say, Uncle Chuck, my boat's floating away. So, so I got ridiculed for many years for that. I guess I deserved it. Uh, but hey, guys, let's go check out your campsite. Well, before we check out your campsite, uh, I mentioned this is part of a hometown series of parks for me. Uh, Caddo Lake State Park, Atlanta State Park, and Dangerfield State Park. Uh, that's where I hung out when I was growing up. Um, so y'all stay tuned. We're going to be planning some trips. I'll show you where we had our family reunions at Atlanta State Park and uh, where I learned how to ski, uh, slalom ski at that, and and then Dangerfield. We were out at Dangerfield uh, back in July 2021. I didn't record when we were out there, uh, but I found a really good campsite. And so as soon as I can get that one booked, I'll be recording that park for y'all. So y'all stick around and, and make sure you check out my hometown series of parks uh, that I will be uh, coming out with real soon. Thanks, guys. Well, y'all join me as we take a look at your campsite. This is number 40. Uh, we're located on the Squirrel Haven Camping Loop here at Caddo Lake State Park. Uh, services, you guys have 20 and 30 amp electric and water. No issues with uh, with the services here. Um, the pads are brand new, guys. They 
just laid this asphalt down. Uh, if you notice or you look on the uh, Texas Parks and Wildlife campsite photos, all they offer is a uh, number 40 and then a very small view of the campsite. Uh, so they've they've recently repaved these uh, these campsites, which made it very easy to level out the Geo Pro, nonetheless. Uh, but look at all this yard space you get back here. Okay, so first of all, you're going to notice that there's an uprooted tree in the back of your campsite. Y'all check out these big old logs that they cut up. Aren't those cool? If you've got kids, man, they're going to enjoy playing on those. That's that's really neat. And this, uh, this tent pad is huge. I mean, you could put a big old tent on this thing back here. And then, uh, of course, over here, guys, you've got your picnic table, wooden picnic table on a concrete pad. And then you've got a double hook lantern pole right there, in-ground grill and firing. In fact, somebody left us some firewood. So uh, whoever was here at Site 40 before us, thank you. We appreciate it. And then the dumpster is right there. Uh, so uh, getting rid of your trash is, is really that close. So let's pan over here. Guys, take a look. This has to be one of the crown jewels of Site 40. Y'all look at how big. I mean, it just goes on forever. How big this pine tree is. That thing is huge, guys. Okay. So, I love this campsite. If you look at how close my neighbor is, there's a lot of space in between us. There's a lot of trees in there. There's a lot of forest behind us. Uh, the frogs, I have heard frogs nonstop since we got here, y'all. I mean, just the amount of wildlife that's back in here. I mean, this is really cool. Love these thick woods. All right, so across from Campsite 40 uh, are some shelters. So let's take a look over there. Um, in case you don't want to bring an RV, you don't want to pitch a tent, Cattle Lake's got you covered. Let's go take a look at those. I noticed here in Squirrel Haven in this camping loop, and by the way, the RV sites over here are back in. Um, there's a lot of traffic, y'all. A lot of foot traffic, a lot of car traffic. Uh, but this is uh, a shelter that they have here. Uh, this is number 14. And the shelter reminds me a lot of the shelters they have over at Martin Dyes Junior State Park. Um, I do believe that you guys get 20 and 30 amp electric over here. Just double check real quick. Yes, you do. You guys get 20 and 30 amp electric. And you got your water hookup right there. Um, again, brand new asphalt pad. Uh, there's 40. That's where we're at, right across the street from you. And then you got a nice picnic table, wooden picnic table, a double lantern hook, plenty of trees. There's your in ground grill and firing. And then, hey, this shelter's open. Uh, uh, there's a broom, a light right there, a concrete pad surface here. You could put your blow up mattress or a cot or something, uh, plenty of space to set up whatever you need to set up in here. This is all right, guys. And then you got a uh, fire extinguisher here on the wall. Love the netting, uh, keep mosquitoes out. All right, so let's take a look in the backyard. You guys get a nice size tent pad. And then uh, all this green, well, it's not green right now. It's a lot of pine straw on the ground, but maybe later it'll be green. Uh, all this space for your kids to play and then uh, walk your dogs or what have you. And then all these tall trees right here in your backyard. This is pretty cool, guys. So even if you're not ready to, to uh, set up the tent or bring your RV, uh, come check out some of these shelters they have here at Caddo Lake State Park.
Okay, so let's talk about the other services besides electric and water. Um, I do want to mention that here in Squirrel Haven Camping Loop, it is not a full hookup. So you will have to visit the dump station, which I'll show you guys uh, in, in a few moments. Um, if you need a full hookup site, they do have some pull-through sites over in the Woodpecker Hollow Camping Loop. Uh, so you guys can check those out. Um, satellite TV this weekend was amazing. Especially with all these tall trees around us, I couldn't believe that we were able to lock in on our locals. And we we're getting locals out of Shreveport, Louisiana. So, um, you know, I just want to give a shout out to Dish. That Dish Playmaker, I do not regret buying it and installing it on my camper. It probably took me three hours from the minute I drilled the first hole to the time I was calling Dish and setting up the account. Uh, I highly recommend it. You guys should get one. Um, it has not let us down. In all the parks that we go to, we always have TV. Um, AT&T and Verizon, wireless. Your cell phone service, we had one bar of AT&T and two bars of Verizon. We're able to make phone calls and surf the internet, text messages, all that kind of stuff. What I noticed was AT&T was slow um, loading web pages and things like that. You can still do what you need to do. It's just going to be just a little slower than what you're used to. Um, in terms of insects and bugs this weekend, we had that rare cold front move through yesterday and it's really cold this morning. So haven't really seen anything in the way of spiders or, or ants or mosquitoes or anything like that. Uh, but I imagine as it warms up that, uh, they're gonna, they're gonna start coming out. So, um, you guys just going to have to keep your eyes open when you come out here. And uh, it all depends on what the weather's doing when you get out here as to what's moving around. Well, y'all, let's talk about uh, services and supplies while you're out here at Cattle Lake State Park. Um, don't rely on headquarters having very much. Uh, they offer t-shirts and cups and knickknacks uh, you can they have a coffee bar you can go up there and make yourself a cup of coffee uh, they sell they have a small refrigerator with uh, sodas and things like that but it's not going to be anything big if you require supplies while you're here ice propane for your uh, rv what have you um, go back out to highway 43 after you leave the park and take a left um, you'll see a family dollar it'll be on your left hand side if you're heading south and they're going to have some basic supplies uh, to help keep you uh, up and running while you're out here at the campground uh, they do uh, sell firewood it's um, an honor system firewood shack which i'll show you guys in a moment uh, where you can get as many sticks as you need there's no price on the on the little box that tells you how much it is um, for example like if you're out at martin creek I'm sorry, if you're out at Martin Dyes State Park, um, they have a little firewood shed there. You can get usually like three sticks for $5. Uh, the same thing at Stephen F. Austin State Park. So a lot of the state parks, uh, the friends of the state park, they, they run their own little firewood shed. And they do the same thing here. Uh, but I just want you to know that uh, the uh, firewood shed down here in Squirrel Haven does not have a price on it. So it's at your honor system. Uh, so th that typically means a dollar a stick. So located in the Squirrel Haven Camping Loop, you have the uh, wood rack here. Uh, this is where you can purchase sticks of firewood. Uh, there's the box where you put your money in. Uh, so if you need any firewood while you're out here, it's conveniently located right here in your camping loop. If you don't feel like cooking when you get out here, you get your camp set up and... Um, you just don't feel like pulling out the groceries and lighting the grill. Let me highly recommend Big Pines Lodge. It's a restaurant that my family's been going to for many years. Uh, they have really good whole catfish and catfish fillets, shrimp. Um, I recommend that you sit outside if the weather's nice. They're located right on the water. You can enjoy the boats going by. Uh, you can see the big cypress trees with the Spanish moss. It really is a, a scenic place to uh, to eat. 
To get there, you leave Caddo Lake State Park, go out the front gate and take a left. Um, you go down about two, three miles and it'll be on your left. You'll see a big sign in a curve and you just follow that road straight back. They have a large parking area. Um, and then also, if you are into swamp tours, um, check out across the street from Big Pines Lodge, there's a place called Captain Ron's Tours. And uh, he has a website. You can actually schedule a tour um, and he'll take you out on the water. So uh, just some uh, things to consider while you're out here at Cattle Lake State Park. Another campsite that you may be interested in at Squirrel Haven is 41. 41 is nice and large. It has a brand new asphalt pad. Uh, you could definitely get a nice diesel pusher or a fifth wheel in here. Looks like they left you some firewood. Uh, you guys, uh, services, you get 20 and 30 amp electric and water. In the back, you have a really spacious tent pad with an in-ground grill and fire ring. And then you get a double hook lantern pole with your picnic table on a concrete pad. Plenty of trees in this campsite. And then again, another thing that I like is uh, the amount of space in between the neighbors. So it is, it is private. I'm also really impressed with campsite 37 here in Squirrel Haven. Um, it's the last campsite on the loop here, which means that you've got all this private space here. You only have one neighbor to your left and then all these woods belong to you. Um, you can get a nice size rig in here guys, 20 and 30 amp electric and water, picnic table on a concrete pad, a nice tent pad in the back if you choose to uh, pop a tent and then you've got a double hook lantern pole back there but i really like the privacy factor of 37. here at caddo lake state park if you would like a full hookup site you can stay here in woodpecker hollow uh, this is a really spacious pull through you could get any kind of rig through here uh, but your services you get 20 30 amp electric and water and sewer and in the back back there, you have your private picnic table, aluminum on a concrete pad with an in-ground grill and firing, as well as your double lantern hook and pole back there. This is all really nice, guys. And then you also um, have restrooms close by as well as a park host. So maybe this pull through uh, might be something you consider the next time you're up here at Caddo Lake State Park. One really cool feature about staying up here at Woodpecker Hollow is that they have a free library. Uh, this is something that we're starting to see at a lot of state parks, uh, most recently at Mother Neff State Park. So right now we're in the Armadillo Run. Uh, this is traditionally a tent camping area with electric. Uh, Mill Pond would be your more primitive tent camping loop with water only. Uh, but this is a great example guys of 34 which is an ada site uh, it has 20 30 amp electric and water um, you've got a larger pad uh, a newer asphalt pad at that and then sidewalk space as well as your picnic table which looks like it could use a little pressure washing and then you have a nice um, tall grill and fire ring over there as well as a lantern hook and pole and it's also conveniently located next to the dumpsters. So you guys may want to give 34 a try. This is an example of campsite 46, which is a water campsite only in Mill Pond camping area. You have a short driveway with a double lantern hook and pole, an in-ground grill and fire ring, a picnic table, and a really nice sized tent pad. Guys, this campsite is really private. It's very well wooded. Uh, maybe something you want to consider the next time you're out here at Cattle Lake State Park. Well, y'all, this is your dump station. Uh, this is the main road coming down from headquarters. If you're staying in Squirrel Haven, you'll need to visit the dump station.
um, if you're staying in Woodpecker Hollow, those are pull-through sites with full hookups. So you won't necessarily need to come through here unless you want to. Uh, so let's take a look at the dump station. So it looks nice and flat, good concrete pad. There's a dumpster for getting rid of your trash located right next to the really beautiful cabins they have to rent here. They have a single sewer outlet connection. And then there's a water hose with non-potable water to do your black tank flush. You guys can see how wide this is. Perfect size for getting your rig through here and taking care of your business. Well, hey, y'all. I hope you're enjoying your tour of Caddo Lake State Park. I'm just taking a small break here at the campsite, enjoying some water. Well, I thought we would get into why they call this mysterious Caddo Lake. Uh, but before I get into the mysterious part, let's talk about two schools of thought as to how this lake formed. Um, the first school of thought is the one that my mother told me when I was a child and the one that I've always remembered. Uh, so we'll go with that one first. Uh, it seems there was a Caddo Indian chief that fell asleep one night and he had a dream. And in his dream, he dreamed that there would be a great flood. And he was told to move his tribe to higher ground. Uh, so he followed instructions and moved his tribe. And then it started raining. And it didn't stop raining. And then the waters came, the flood waters, and it flooded the forest and the village that they were in. And that's uh, how Caddo Lake got its name. Um, and that's how it was formed. So that was a story that my mom always told me. The second story is that several hundred years ago, um, just off of the Red River, there was a great log jam. It was called the Great Raft. And there were several logs that due to erosion and flooding had uh, become dislodged from the ground and they stacked up in the riverbed, uh, sometimes 25 feet high and 100 miles long. And in the 1800s, Captain Shreve um, came along and he, as well as the Corps of Engineers later, they removed the log jam. And when they did, the water ran off and created Caddo Lake. Now, if you've heard of Captain Shreve, you'll know that he is named for Shreveport, Louisiana. So those are two schools of thought on how Caddo Lake was formed. Now the mysterious part. Some folks up here believe that they have seen Bigfoot roaming around through the woods. Um, it's so much ingrained in the folklore up here that if you go into uh, town, if you go eat at Big Pine Lodge, uh, you'll see they have a lot of uh, different signs and figurines and things like that uh, with Bigfoot on it. So that's the mysterious portion. Um, you kind of get the creepy feeling when you're out here and you see the Spanish moss hanging off of the big cypress trees. It, it's enough to make you think um, about some of that folklore. But anyway, let's get back to your tour. Y'all make sure you bring your boat out here to Caddo Lake State Park. Guys, there's a lot of space out here for y'all to do some fishing. But if you don't own a boat and you just want to fish off the dock, remember it's always free. You don't need a fishing license as long as you're fishing off the bank in a Texas state park. Make sure that you bring your fishing gear uh, when you're out here at Caddo Lake State Park. They have a really nice uh, fishing pier here that you can fish off of. It's well lit. They have several lights here. 
And then next to the fishing pier is a canoe rental. Uh, you'll actually rent those canoes up at headquarters. Uh, but that's a very popular activity to do out here. So the next time you're out here at Cattle Lake State Park, make sure you rent a canoe and then go take a, a tour around these cypress trees. So y'all, I mentioned yesterday that canoeing out here at Cattle Lake State Park is one of the premier activities. Um, in fact, it looks like there's some people out there canoeing early this morning. Uh, but I wanted to give you some more information on uh, the canoe rentals out here. Um, you will not rent your canoe from this, this shed. You'll need to go to headquarters. Um, they'll give you life jackets and everything that you need. Um, but it, it looks like for one hour, it's going to cost $10. Um, three hours, $20.00. And then you can go all the way up to 48 hours, which would be $70. Uh, you'll get your life jacket and return your life jacket and equipment up at the, uh, at the headquarters. Well, y'all, let's talk about your activities while you're here. We've already covered fishing. In fact, we're on the fishing pier right now. So beautiful out here this morning. We talked about renting a canoe. Hiking. Now I'm going to be honest with y'all. I had um, checked out the hiking trail map before I came here and I was kind of disappointed. I just left Busher State Park where they have a seven mile combined trail. And so when I noticed that the longest hiking trail here was seven tenths of a mile, I thought, oh, well, this is not going to be good. Uh, but I was pleasantly surprised when I got here to find that the trails here are challenging, even though that they're short. I highly recommend the CCC Cut Through Trail. It's a historic trail. You guys can hike up those beautiful stairs that the CCC put in place back in the 30s. Um, trust me, your legs will get a workout. Um, continue on, and you'll come up to the Pine Ridge Loop. The Pine Ridge Loop is very challenging, guys. It says moderate, but it's more challenging than it is moderate. Uh, but you'll hike that around and you'll see the beautiful cabins um, that the CCC built when they were here. And continue your hike around and you'll come up to the Pine Ridge Spur. The Pine Ridge Spur is where you will see the CCC um, pavilion and right next to the pavilion is a fire pit that they built you guys have to really stop and check that out one of the really neat things about hiking on the trails here is that um, Caddo Lake State Park does a great job of putting in these uh, log benches for you to sit down on also, they've gone to great lengths to make sure that they have some really nice uh, bridges that you can walk across as you're on the trail. So you guys definitely have to have to check that out. And then, of course, um, wrap up your hike by following the Caddo Forest Trail. That trail will take you down to the water and you can see the boat dock the boat ramp and there's a day use area if you like to have a picnic down there very very scenic very beautiful so those are just some activities that you guys can y'all can check out uh the next time you're out here at caddo lake state park So out here at Cattle Lake State Park on the Pine Ridge Spur, as you're heading up toward the CCC Pavilion, uh, you guys will run across these really well-crafted bridges that they've put in here. I mean, these things look really nice, guys. Check out the stonework at the base down here. And then you've got this really peaceful creek running through here. always say that it's the little features at each state park that make it unique and definitely Caddo Lake um, 
they're doing a, a good job of putting in these really nice looking bridges and making these trails enjoyable for everyone out here. Well, y'all is out here at Caddo Lake State Park on the trail and I found Paul Paul. Y'all been missing Paul Paul? Well, here he is right here. No, I'm kidding guys. This is a tree that is referred to as America's forgotten fruit. It's the largest edible fruit tree native to North America. So y'all have to get out here to Caddo Lake State Park so you can come and see Paul Paul. If you're staying out here at Caddo Lake State Park or if you just want to come out here for the day, they have an amazing uh, group dining hall out here that was built by the CCC. And outside in the back, they have these picnic tables. They're very large. Uh, so you could have a family reunion or a large group gathering. And some of the picnic tables are ADA compliant as well. Uh, but they have a nice grill area back here. Uh, there's a light po pole uh, if you want to be out here uh, as it's getting late. So that you can see they have ADA ramp back here. This facility is just second to none. It is beautiful. Beautiful complex. And then they have sidewalks all around the building for you to get around. Uh, there's a playground for your children to play. And then they also have a day use area up front here with several picnic tables and standing grills. But y'all check this out. Really nice construction. Uh, it looks like a log cabin, the way that they built it, uh, CCC. So just uh, another option to consider the next time you're out here at Cattle Lake State Park and you have a big group gathering. Well, y'all, I sure enjoy checking out Caddo Lake State Park up here in Karnak, Texas. It's a pleasure to uh, explore these wonderful CCC parks and see the amazing craftsmanship that went into uh, buildings like this group dining hall recreation facility behind me. But y'all, I got to hit the trail. It's time to keep moving. Uh, next weekend, we're going to be at Martin Creek Lake State Park up in Tatum, Texas, up by Longview. So y'all come and join us on that one. Remember, if you enjoyed the content of this video, make sure you give me a thumbs up. I appreciate it. Uh, hit that notification bell so that you'll be notified when our videos post every Saturday morning at 11 a.m. And remember, all my current subscribers, guys, I appreciate you so much. You guys rock so much. I appreciate you watching. And all my future subscribers, guys, what are you waiting for? Get on board. We visit a lot of parks. We see a lot of campgrounds, a lot of campsites. Uh, so hop on board and join me on my journey as we travel. And remember, I'll see you at the campsite.